Hello, Ken Spriggs here with a, an unboxing video of uh, a new kit that I got, the um, Space 1999 Eagle, uh, the brand new uh, version of it from Round 2 MPC. Um, I actually ordered this kit a week ago, <laughs> more than a week ago. It arrived exactly a week ago, Wednesday. Uh, and when I say it arrived, it was delivered outside of my apartment near my mailbox. And I came home from work uh, 15 minutes after it was delivered and some thieving piece of crap had stolen it. And unfortunately, living in an apartment, this has happened to me about two other times. Not frequently, thankfully. The last time was about two years ago. Some jack wagon stole uh, another uh, set of model kits that I got in the mail. Uh, so, very leery about ordering some things right now, especially at Christmas time, since the thieves are out, uh, or the porch pirates, as people like to call them. So, uh, or I'll have it delivered to my work, or have it delivered to the main apartment office here. But uh, very upset, not only just because of the cost of it, it cost me about $52 to have it shipped to me, from Call TV Man, and no, no fault of Call TV Man, they did their job and they delivered it rather quickly. But uh, they can't really be responsible that somebody steals the thing before I get to it. So very upset, very frustrated if I ever get my hands on that thieving criminal around here. Um, but anyway, I was able to um, to get one ordered in from a local hobby shop, uh, which I picked up today, so nobody could steal it. So very happy to get this kit. Uh, when it was released or announced last year, or this year, I'm sorry, earlier this year, I was able to see the, um, the mock-up of it at Wonderfest, which they had. Really impressed, really impressed with the detail. Uh, when they first announced they were making a newer one, a little bit bigger, I hadn't known much about it. And so I was thinking, eh, I'm not crazy about the smaller one. I have the bigger 22-inch one, which I will build here someday, uh, which is really nice. It's an incredible kit. It has a lot of great detail. It's really, really faithful to the, to the um, studio model. Um, but when I saw it at Wonderfest and I saw how they really augmented the detailing between the piping and the piping is more realistic and it's just, it's better scale. It's a little bit bigger, about two inches longer. So a much, much superior kit all around. I don't have the original kit, uh, which is still available, original version of it, uh, to compare the two. But I will show a still here in a moment um, from Call TV Man's uh, website showing the difference between the two. And it's pretty stark. Uh, so if you do want to get this, I do recommend Call TV Man. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. But uh, they, they're they uh, definitely an excellent website. Excellent shipping as long as nobody grabs onto it when it gets to your place. Um, but um, I built this kit and the other... Space 1990, 1999 kits back in the mid-70s when they came out, or late 70s. Really loved that series when it came out. Uh, that one in UFO I loved a lot as well. Um, I wish they had done some UFO models at that time in the U.S. from MPC or other ones, but it wasn't as popular, I guess, so they didn't because those would have been some fantastic kits. There are kits available of that. They're rather expensive and difficult to get. But um, Space 199 was, was fairly easy to get, and it was, um, there were quite a few kits produced of that. So, All right, so um, uh, I'm not building this up just yet, but I will be doing it somewhere shortly down the road because uh, this would be a much easier kit to build than a much larger one. Uh, that and the much larger one would take a lot of real estate to display it, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that one yet, but that one's pretty huge. Uh, but this kit comes out to about 14 inches long when completed. Um, I do want to uh, open up the cockpit windows, which I'll show you here in a minute, and light it and scratch bolt a cockpit for the inside. Um, hoping, I haven't heard anything yet, but I'm hoping that Paragraphics might release a photo etch set for this, like they did for the Hawk, which allowed you to open up the cockpit windows. And it also gave you a cockpit, which would be really cool. So if they would do something like that, even the basic shape of it, you could add to it, it would be awesome. So, all right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new MPC Round 2 Space 1999 Eagle.
Okay, so as you saw from the previous still, the, um, the newer kit is, is considerably larger than the original classic one from the 70s, uh, in addition to all the, the added detail and the more accurate looking model. Uh, from what I understand, the original kit is about 12 inches in length. This one is 14 inches, about two inches more, which is a considerable size. Uh, and um, the detailing certainly is much, much better. Uh, so um, the box itself has some images on the side from the actual TV show and of the model kit. Some different ideas of, of what, how you can paint the uh, car or the passenger module. <coughs> they have different ones, obviously the red and white, the, just the white and gray, uh, the orange they did at certain times. Uh, they have some pictures over on this side showing the aluminum rocket nozzles which are available for this kit just like they are in the larger one. Now this particular one I did get the ones for the larger kit because that's a much pricier kit. It's over $100 itself plus the plus the, um, the aluminum bells. There were two different sets of those too. Uh, but this kit's only about $45 give or take. The aluminum bell set is about 80 or 90 bucks which to me I'm not going to invest in it for this smaller kit. Uh, what I'd rather do is use some outclads to bring out that, that aluminum and do that instead rather than to um, to spend that extra cost. Um, the bottom of the, the box has some more information about it. There's pictures of the model kit, which are pretty cool. It kind of looks like these engine bells are the, the kit. They don't look like the actual metal ones. I'm not quite certain. Um, Put some information on it as well. So, all right, let's go ahead and open it up. Okay. Good. All right, just like most of their other kits, they have decal placement or painting options on the sides of it. <coughs> Excuse me the sides of the box. I don't want to dump it out. Yeah, there we go. So there's the VIP pod, the rescue pod, colors on that, some more pictures on the side, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, they have their standard dome base. This one, though, is in the same color as the kit, which is kind of an off-white, which I like better than the black. That way it's easier to paint uh, if you want to do a planetscape on it. So uh, it's like a couple of screws, which I'm thinking are to attach the passenger pod onto it. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Uh, you have your instructions. And a lot of this is going to be very similar. In fact, from what I've seen on other, um, other unboxings, a lot of these parts look like they're just scaled down versions of the bigger 22 inch Eagle which is kind of cool because there was some really good detail on those, especially these <clears throat> little areas here, which were notorious on the original kit to be have no detail, <laughs> not even any space between the spines. It just looked like crap, so it wasn't very good. Um, as far as that is concerned, this has a whole lot more detail as you can see. Okay, so Really extensive um, instructions. Uh, the, the side pods as well are a more complicated construction. I believe the ones on the other kit were just like two pieces that glued together, uh, probably creating some seams. This has the top, the bottom, the sides, four sides to it, so that's kind of cool. Will also probably help quite a bit in painting it also, if you can have those parts separated and, and painted in sub-assemblies, that sort of thing. So that's kind of cool. All right, passenger compartment. Um, and we'll look at it here in a moment, but the only thing I can see a drawback in the passenger compartment is the windows are just a smooth section. And then that's supposed to be accomplished, the separated windows using a decal, um, which I'm not that crazy about. Uh, even on the original one, I believe it had three separate windows molded in. <clears throat> not a hard thing to fix. You can use some 
styrene stripping to make it separation between the two and do that as well so so we'll take a look at it okay and then you have the back and it just kind of shows the final part another thing I really like are the um, the nozzles come in two pieces but they're solid so you don't have a seam down the side of the nozzle you have a top a bottom and then a top so that's kind of cool same with these smaller ones so that's really going to help with not having a seam make it look more natural because uh, the line around it would look better with a groove it would look natural like it's supposed to be there and you have two different options of the um of the landing gear uh rods one that's extended and one that's compressed if you want to show it in flight display or or have it landed on there so that's kind of cool all right all right so those are the instructions all right we have a decal sheet here which we'll open up here real quick i was kind of hoping that they would uh do what they did with the bigger eagle and have a uh, more extensive decal sheet that has some of the shading and the different um, different parts like that it doesn't look like they did on this it just comes with kind of the standard standard decals so you have quite a bit of the darker black um, sections for the the cockpit and I believe the sides, the side modules, that kind of thing. There are quite a few decals over here as well, which are kind of cool, little tiny ones, to add some detail. The kit's kind of a straightforward color. It's just like a whitish gray, or a grayish white, sorry. Um, you know, with some shading on it, but these little bits will add some color to it to help it pop a bit. They also have some little um, screens here for the windshield of the kit showing the figures inside which are kind of cool um, I'm gonna take a route where I want to light the cockpit so I'm gonna have to do some modification to make that happen so all right so not a bad decal sheet but um doesn't really have the added um, extra shading and that sort of thing which would be kind of cool different color panels um, I haven't heard yet but um, I'm hoping that Paragraphics does a photo etch set for it like they did for the for the um, for the Hawk That way you can do like a little more accurate windshield For the cockpit kind of things um, They also had an interior which was really cool So if they come up with something like that in photo etch that would at least help you with the basics Whereas I'm going to be looking at scratch building it and That kind of thing so all right so it looks like we have three different bags of sprues in the kit. So let me go ahead and open those up and then we'll take a look. All right, so here is the first set of sprues, the first bag. And this one has the top or top and bottom of the cockpit cone. This looks to be about the same as the original. Well, it's obviously bigger. Um, another thing which I'm a little disappointed in is that they did not open up those windows. You'll have to cut them yourself, which isn't a big deal, but uh, would have been kind of an easy thing for them to do, I think, to, um, to give that option. Put some clear, you know, plastic in them. You could have then uh, still put the decal over if you wanted to, or the black decal, whichever. So, uh, it also has the, um, the front and rear compartments with the door for the passenger section and the sides. Here's some of the top uh, piping work for the little parts in the front and the back of the kit. This looks like a, a duplicate sprue. Both the same front and back. Okay. All right. And then this is a uh, one of the one of the modules here and it does look very much like the um, the bigger 22 inch which is kind of cool there's another doorway I'm not sure what that's for where that goes 
because the cargo modules have it built in. And what to look when we get to it, but I believe the, the pod, it's uh, the front um, of this doesn't have one on it. Oh, I know what it is, never mind. It goes on the front of each of these. The front and the back ones, so, okay. And then you have the little part here that goes in there, and then you have some added detail that goes onto it. That's kind of cool. Uh, so here are two of the side landing gear pods that you have, like the top and the sides, which are kind of cool. Another repeat sprue. So that helps because it gives you the same parts on, on a repeat of the same sprue for the front and the back. So, because you have the four landing pods and you have the, the two halves, two sides of each of the, um, I don't know what you'd call them, but they have the different, uh, the different machinery inside of it. So, okay. All right. So that's that sprue. Let me go ahead and open up the, um, the next one. Okay. So here's the second bag of sprues. And, um, Looks like there are four of the same sprue that have the uh, engine nozzles. As I said, it's kind of cool that they have the um, they have these as a separate piece, but it's in a cone shape. It's in the actual shape of it. This one has the built-in uh, piece that would go inside, and then you have the bottom or the back of it, and it just glues onto there. So that'll, that'll hide that seam there really well. You wouldn't even have to do much with it at all because there are some, some concentric lines around the circle of these. So, And the same with the smaller ones as well right here, which are kind of cool. So that's pretty neat. Uh, this one also has, which is neat, the little teeny retro rocket on the, um, on the cockpit. You have a couple of those that... I believe is built into it. I'm not, don't quote me on that. But I know for the bigger one, I got some aluminum replacements that look more realistic. So I'm not sure, but these are separate. So those can be painted separately and put in. So there's four of these. Once again, just repeating. It looks like we have a bunch of other repeating ones. All right, so you have your landing pads, which are kind of cool. So actually a little more detailed. And they're actually two two parts. You have the top of it with the detail and you have the bottom which just has this little part that just glues inside of it. So that's kind of cool. Give it a little more depth. You have the side pieces, another side piece, the bottom of these. Uh, and then here's some of the detail that goes into the little machinery parts that are new. Uh, to give it a lot more detail than the old one had. Uh, you have your landing gear. Well, this is landing gear for the uh, passenger section. I think these are, yeah, these are the two different options for the, for the landing gear. You can have it compressed or you can have it extended. Compressed if it's landed, extended if it's in flight mode. So that's kind of cool. Part of the, um, the tanks in the back for the engine exhaust. You have the little retro rockets on the side for the side pods. <coughs> All right, so that's kind of cool. This is just a repeat of it. Same thing. And actually there's four of these. That's interesting. I wonder why there's four. Oh, never mind. I was getting confused on the other one. There's four because there's four pods. There would have to be four of these pads, four of everything. So that's correct. <laughs> it's supposed to be four. So again, these are all just duplicates. All right. So very efficient kit. They definitely have combined it so that they can produce just limited separate sprues, but reproduce the parts over and over. So, okay, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the last, uh, the last bag for the last sprues. All right, and then here's the last bag. Uh, has some of the bigger parts in it. So here's the roof to the passenger compartment. 
Now, as I said, you have these areas that are just smooth. There's no separations of the three windows on each. So I'm not sure why they did that. I guess it would make it easier to put on the decals, but it's not, it's not realistic. So I'm going to have to fix that. Um, so not thrilled about that particular one, but it's, it's workable. You have the bottom of the passenger compartment. Okay. And you can see the little holes right here uh, where you would screw that in place. I have to look and see if there's other options besides putting uh, screws that you're going to be able to see. I'm not crazy about, about that idea. All right. Then here are some more parts for the top of the spine for the piping that goes across. I like this a lot better. It's a lot more realistic, better, well, more well done. The one for the old kit was one big whole piece and it was clunky, a little too thick and un unrealistic. It didn't really have the right proportions. So definitely a much better improvement on this kit here, to be sure. Um, I think this part's different too, where the back of the, the um, cockpit fits on. Although it always cracked me up because with that rounded profile, <laughs> there's no door. And, and it's really not connecting into a door, which obviously there is a door going between it. So I guess we're supposed to believe there's some kind of extendable part or something. I'm not sure. But um, that always cracked me up. But that's how it actually looked on the actual um, studio model, as far as I understand. Um, you have some of the ribbing for the engine area back here and here. A couple other parts. I think that might be for the stand. Okay. All right. So that's all the parts. So uh, I'll go ahead and give you a couple of close-ups of some of the... Um, of the parts as well to kind of get a better look at those also. All right, so here's the um, the roof of the passenger compartment. As I said, you can see they're just smooth right there. Uh, there is some added detail that goes on to those little sections in the middle. So that's kind of cool where they didn't just mold it all into one piece. So that's kind of neat. There's the bottom of it. Got some of that detail built in as well. Okay. And there's the new uh, piping for the roof. Very, very different than the original kit of this. Much more realistic. Much better, much better detailed. I guess those slots right there are where you would put the screws for the passenger compartment. So they're going to be somewhat visible. So I might come up with something else to kind of disguise those and not show it. Um, perhaps something with magnets so it can be removed, that kind of thing. So, so we'll have to see. All right. All right. So here is the um, the screw for the bottom of the landing gear pods. There's that um, foot pad, as I said, which comes in two parts. There's the hollow bottom. And there's the other part that goes into it. There's some of the detailed parts <clears throat> that go into the um, Machinery pods, I'm going to call them because I'm not sure what they're called, which is kind of cool. There's some of the engine uh, engine tanks. And then some more of the construction parts in the sides. I like how they have those uh, parts there that are black as a separate raised part. You can easily tape that off and keep it nice and accurate. So that's pretty cool. Put those right there. There's a foot pad for the uh, passenger section because that has its own little landing pads. There's the um, extended and compressed landing gear pipes. You have a choice. Some more little details. It's 
system with the piping. So this kit has a lot more added piping that you put on to the brace at the top. It's not just all one big clunky piece like the original was. So, okay. All right, and then we have the, um, the engine nozzles, which once again are pretty cool. So that's the part of the nozzle you would see coming out of the back. And you would paint that dark inside. And then this is the part that goes on the back of it. There's that little piece that goes into the cockpit. And then you have the smaller engine nozzles for the rest of the kit. You have some on the um, on the passenger compartment, and you have some underneath the uh, machinery compartments, so machinery modules. All right. All right, and here are the last two uh, sprues, and like I said, each of these are duplicated several times, depending on how many of the parts are needed. So here's the cockpit. Now that I look at it, I think that was the same, that little retro nozzle in the old kit as well. Um, solid windows, which I can still work with. You have the, um, the front and or back to the passenger compartment. And again, photo etch would be nice if you wanted to paint that door and have two different colors. It would make it easier. Uh, you have the side of it one of the side panels with the door and then you have some of the piping for the um, machinery compartments in the front and aft some other tiny little parts I think that's one of the hinge like things that go on the back of the cockpit module so okay and then you have the other parts to the landing gear landing pods you have the tops of them Some more of the little domes. I think these domes are for the engine parts, the engine section. Some more piping. You have the door that goes on the front of this uh, machinery compartment. And there's one of the sides. There's two sides. Some nice detail in there. The sides to the uh, landing compartments. And then uh, that goes on the uh, machinery compartment as well. One little thing that people always point out, which I think is kind of cool, is this is the lunar module that landed on the moon. <laughs> the Eagle, which was also called the Eagle, which is pretty cool. Front and back. So when they built this model, they took small ones of this and they used it to kit bash to put some detail. So that's pretty cool. If you look close enough you can tell that that's what that is it's pretty awesome all right all right and then the last thing I want to look at is the decal set get a little closer look at that so the majority of this is all of the black portions that you see the different shapes to the cockpit openings and the uh, things of that nature so it's a bunch of little parts like this which are kind of cool they had some added detail to just kind of break up the, the stark white and or gray to the ship you have those orange panels which I believe go around some of the tubing in the top and several cool versions of the Moonbase Alpha logo which is really cool including one that's in color I like that And then the, um, the cockpit images, Commander Koenig, and then uh, Alan, the pilot, so, with the space helmet. So, okay. So, pretty cool. So, a pretty cool kit all about. All right. So, overall, a uh, very excellent kit. A welcome addition to the Space 1999 uh, set of model kits. Uh, so, kudos to Round 2 MPC. I love what you're doing with the um, 
Space 1999 kits, uh, bringing out newer, newer things in, in larger, more accurate versions. So uh, definitely love uh, this kit. Can't wait to build it here sometime in the near future, maybe early next year. Um, no set time on that right now. Uh, for now, I will be continuing my um, thing from another world diorama, which uh, should have completed here in another week or so. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and move on to um, the next project, which I'll be talking about uh, coming up here in the near future as well. So, all right. Well, thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming up here. All right. And have a nice Thanksgiving, everybody, uh, to you and your family as well. Thank you.